Eating food from the moment you wake up to the moment you go to bed is the stupidest thing you can do, unless you want to be fat. This is what happens when you fall for the year. Breakfast is the most important meal of the day, BS. So this was roughly two years ago, and I was consistently eating breakfast every single morning, every day, along with eating three to four times a day. Typical breakfast for me would include something like this, baked oats. So we've got oatmeal, uh, peanut butter, some berries, you know, all these nutritious, balanced breakfasts that people recommend. Um, or even pancakes, or here we've got oatmeal with some uh, raisins, walnuts, chia seeds, all these healthy things. And so I was eating these things religiously every morning, telling myself that it was healthy and balanced, full of complex carbohydrates. But secretly, I was just addicted to carbs and sugar. And this was my way of telling myself I could eat those things. And this is what happens when you eat breakfast every day. And then I discovered this thing called fasting. And I realized you don't actually need to eat breakfast. In fact, you don't need to eat around the clock. You can actually only eat once or twice a day and be absolutely fine. So now I am what I call a breakfast dodger. I do my best to dodge breakfast. I haven't had breakfast in a very long time. Nowadays, I just eat one to two big and enjoyable meals a day and I'm able to stay effortlessly lean year round without counting calories. And I would say I'm respectably shredded, definitely not stage ready, but definitely respectable. And so coming up in this video, we'll explore the exact fasting protocol you can use to get absolutely shredded without counting a single calorie. We'll go over the science behind why fasting is the most effective way to burn fat while keeping your muscle. I'll show you how to manage your hunger while fasting. And we'll also go through some example full days of meals. So firstly, what is the problem with conventional methods? So like the method that I spoke about earlier, two years ago when I was eating breakfast every day, counting my calories. Well, the problem with that is firstly, counting calories is very complex, especially for beginners. It's like, it's like learning a whole new skill, like learning to ride a bike again. You've got to understand macros and calories and use these finicky apps. It's boring. It's boring as fuck. And it's very time consuming. And it's, it's not what you want to be spending your mental and physical energy on when you're trying to get in shape. And it can take a toll on your mental health and stress when you're constantly worrying about these numbers on a screen like we're looking at screens enough. We don't need to look at screens and numbers anymore. It's like having a second boss or a second job. The other problem with conventional methods is people eat all day. Eat, they eat like four to six meals a day. I remember when I was doing this, you know, you've got breakfast, early morning snack, then you've got your lunch, then you've got an afternoon snack, then you've got dinner, and then maybe another snack after dinner. Like it's just ridiculous. People do this because I'm stoking my metabolism, bro. But your metabolism doesn't fire up the more that you eat. All this leads to is consistently high insulin levels. So when you eat, your blood sugar rises. Insulin is released in response to that. And so that just makes you more hungry and it doesn't allow you to tap into your body's fat stores. The other issue with this method is that it's just a waste of time eating multiple times a day, it's time consuming. Like there's just no getting around that. It's inconvenient. You can't go anywhere without Tupperware. So that's what's wrong with the conventional method. And so here's why the fasting approach, in my opinion, is far superior. Fasting has been done safely for thousands of years. Even dating back to like, Caveman days, think, like think of caveman, like they wouldn't have four to six meals a day. They, they don't have access to food all around the day. They don't have refrigerators to fucking store their food. So naturally humans are meant to fast. We are designed to be able to go long periods without food. Otherwise we wouldn't be here today. 
So first of all, it is safe. Secondly, you don't have to count calories when you fast. Sure you can, it might be helpful, but personally I think if you just stick to a well-structured fasting protocol, you do not need to count calories. It's less of a hassle, you don't have to go shopping as much, you don't have to meal prep as much, so you don't have to eat as much, you don't have to clean as much. Overall, life is just way fucking easier. Then you have more energy, you get ridiculously shredded while staying lean year round. You have less hunger, paradoxically, even though you are eating less, we'll touch on this later, but there are metabolic processes that happen when you fast that actually make you crave food less. Uh, and lastly, you just have more mental clarity. Your body is spending less energy on digesting food. It's just a more efficient running machine, mentally and physically. So let's go into funding, fasting fundamentals. What is fasting? In short, if you click on this video, you probably know what fasting is, but to sum it up, fasting is simply not consuming calories for a period of time. That being said, there are different types of fasting. So the most popular one, which is time restricted eating, which you've probably heard of is when you fast for a certain amount of hours and then you feed for a certain amount of hours. So for example, a 16-8 is fasting for 16 hours, feeding for eight hours, meaning you don't eat for 16 hours and then you have an eight hour eating window. Then you've got slight variations of that, such as 18-6, 20 to four, and then you've got OMAD, which is one meal a day, which is essentially a 23 hour fasting window with a one hour fasting feeding window. So these are the protocols that we'll, we'll be playing around with. The other type of fasting is extended fasts. So 48, 72 plus hours. Generally, these are not recommended. 48 is okay, but generally 72 plus isn't recommended if your goal is to build muscle and lose fat or even just retain muscle because as you get past 72 hours, then you're at a greater risk of actually losing muscle. So ideally, I wouldn't actually go past one meal a day if you wanna get lean and shredded while retaining muscle. So how fasting works and why it's so effective is, firstly, it just creates a calorie deficit. It's way fucking easier to stay in a calorie deficit when you only have a certain amount of hours in the day to eat, compared to eating from breakfast all the way to the hour before you go to bed. Like, just think about it logically. Which one of those two methods is easier to eat more food in? If you have less time, you're gonna eat less food. It, it is, it's, that's just, it's that simple. But besides that, there are metabolic processes that happen in the body that make fasting more effective for fat loss. First is insulin. So when you eat food, your blood sugar rises, and so your body produces insulin as a response to handle that rise in blood sugar. The reason why consistently high insulin levels are bad is because when insulin is high, that inhibits fat oxidation. So it stops you from burning your fat stores. Insulin is pretty much the gatekeeper on fat burning. So when it's up, you can't burn fat. So we want to keep our insulin levels low by not eating all the time. Secondly is when your insulin is low, you are more sensitive to insulin. So when you're not eating all day, you're more sensitive to the effects of insulin. And insulin can be very powerful in terms of nutrient partitioning. So that pretty much just means your body is more effective at using the fuel that you give it for fat burning, for muscle building, as opposed to just storing it all for fat. Next, as you get into a fast, your growth hormone levels increase. So I don't remember the specific amount, but the deeper you get into a fast, 
Just know that your growth hormone levels increase, making you burn more fat while you're holding on to more muscle, while giving you more energy. I think it's from like the 16 hour plus range when it starts to increase significantly. And lastly, intermittent fasting puts your body into a state of ketosis. So after about 16 hours of fasting, even if you eat carbs for your last meal, your body will still enter into a state of ketosis and that allows your body to burn fat as fuel, which obviously makes the fat burning process easier. And ketones, aka ketosis, is also very muscle sparing. So even though you're deep into a fast, your body will be burning fat as fuel as opposed to muscle because ketones are very muscle sparing. Cool, next. All right, big one, food. So what's allowed during your fast? So like we spoke about before, anything that doesn't have calories. So that includes water, black coffee, tea, and potentially diet sodas. So there's a thing known as a dirty fast and a clean fast. Clean fast just means water, coffee, tea. A dirty fast means you can include artificial chemicals that don't have calories, such as artificial sweeteners, like Diet Coke, for example. Some people say dirty fasting isn't good because it can still spike your insulin levels, which is bad, like we spoke about before. Uh, But there's also some research to say that artificial sweeteners do not spike insulin. So I think it varies person to person. You just have to try for yourself. Try consuming artificial sweeteners during your fast. See if it makes you hungrier. See what it does to your energy levels. Personally, I think I do fine consuming these during my fast. uh, But everyone's different. Find what works for you. So when it's actually time to break your fast, what do you eat? Well, a big mistake some people make is they think that, okay, they've fasted all day, so that means during their window they can eat whatever they want and not gain weight. But that is a big mistake. What you eat actually matters still if you want to get the most out of fasting. So what I recommend is during your eating window to eat a low-carb, predominantly animal-based diet. That includes things like meat, eggs, dairy, some low carb fruit, AKA berries, and vegetables. So things like this. Why do we want to eat like this? Well, simply put, it just makes it easier to get through the fasting periods. If you're just eating junk all the time during your eating windows, then that shit is not full of nutrients and it's just gonna make you hungrier and you'll struggle to get through your fasting periods. So some general nutritional principles while you are doing a fasting protocol is to eat high protein and moderate to high fat while keeping your carbs low to moderate-ish. Like I said before, you wanna eat nutrient dense whole foods Minimal processed foods, less things that come in a packet, less things that are full of ingredients lists. All because these just make it easier to get through your fasting period. That's all it's about. All right. So a big one, addressing hunger. So when you think of these fasting windows, you might think, fuck, how am I gonna not get hungry for like, 16, 18, 20 hours a day. Like that just seems ridiculous. So there's a few things. Firstly, like I said before, a dirty slash clean fast can have a big impact on how hungry you get. Uh, If you are getting super hungry during your window, then consider cutting out all chemicals, sweeteners, and just having water, tea, black coffee. Secondly, are you eating enough during your feeding window? If you are eating enough during your eating window, you shouldn't really be hungry for the next 18, 20 hours because your body has more than enough fuel to sustain itself. The next question I would ask is, are you eating high protein and high fat during your eating window? Because these foods are very slow digesting, they're very satiating, they give your body the nutrients it needs. 
So if you're eating high protein, high fat, you shouldn't really be that hungry. Now, inevitably there will be some times when you just do get hungry, like it's just a fact. So there are some hunger suppressing hacks you can use, something like black coffee, green tea, and sparkling water are really good for your fasting window. Firstly, they just fill the stomach and they hydrate you. So being dehydrated is a very common uh, cause of feeling hungry. And the moment that you hydrate, you're actually not that hungry. Um, also black tea, sorry, black coffee, green tea and sparkling water are good appetite suppressants. They fill your stomach, especially sparkling water. Um, it just gives your stomach that bubbly and full feeling and that can help you stave off hunger for another few hours. Last one is electrolytes. So obviously when you're not eating, you're not getting any electrolytes. So sometimes all your body needs is electrolytes. And if you just have some sodium, magnesium, potassium, that can actually go a long way to suppressing your hunger. Next thing on hunger is just understanding it's a process. So if you're eating all day right now, you're not just gonna go straight to one meal a day and be fine. You're gonna have to gradually taper your way down. You're gonna have to go from a 12-12 to a 16-8 and then stay there for a few weeks and then go to an 18-6 and then stay there for a few weeks and so on and so forth. It is a process. Like you, you're just not gonna get there straight away. Next is understanding that hunger comes in waves. So let's say normally you're used to eating breakfast. As you start fasting and it comes to breakfast time, you will get a wave of hunger because that's what your body is, has been used to for 10, 20, 30 years. But understand that hunger is only a wave. Hunger doesn't, hunger doesn't build up in a linear fashion. Hunger comes in waves. And so all you need to do is just fight that initial wave and the hunger will dip. And then it might come back in the next few hours and understand that it will dip again. So this is all mental. It's just understanding that yes, hunger will be there. It might be excruciating for a moment, but it will go down. It's all a wave game. And lastly, to deal with hunger, it's just reframing your mindset. A good way I like to approach it is when you feel those waves of hunger, just understand that that is your body burning off its fat. And when you have that mindset, you can actually embrace that hunger and you can actually welcome it. And it's not something that you need to quench straight away. Um, and that's been a really powerful mindset reframe for me. So some common misconceptions, we've kind of already touched on these, but I'll just quickly go over it. People think that when you're fasting, when you're not eating for most of the day, that you're going to lose a bunch of muscle. That is absolutely not true. While I've been fasting, I would say I've gained muscle while losing fat, AKA body recomposition. It is entirely possible. In fact, I think fasting actually makes it easier to recomp. Why is that? Well, firstly, like we spoke about before, if you're fasting, your body will be in a state of ketosis for most, if not all of the day, depending on your diet and ketones we know are inherently muscle sparing. Fasting also increases growth hormone, which as well is muscle sparing. Additionally, like we spoke about before, if you are watching your diet, you're going to be eating a high protein diet, which is also very muscle sparing. And lastly, you just want to train your fasting, pair your fasting protocol with a training regimen that involves resistance training, where you're pushing yourself, you're training hard, you're focusing on your strength, and you're trying to increase your strength in the gym on a week to week basis. That will ensure that you don't lose muscle. Another misconception of fasting is that it's very difficult, but like I spoke about before, as long as you're aware of how the hunger waves will come, how to address the hunger, why you might be feeling hungry, it's really not that hard. 
All you need to do is just ease your way into it. And that leads me to the last point, the implementation slash progress part of it. So when you're getting started, you just you want to make gradual adjustments. It's all about easing into it. First, you just want to just start with what you eat. So fix your diet first before even worrying about fasting windows because once you're eating the right foods, a low carb animal based diet, fasting will come very easily. It will come very naturally. A lot of people that go on an animal based or even on a carnivore diet naturally fall into a one to two meal a day protocol, even without trying, just because those foods are so satiating they keep you full for so long and you just don't need to eat all day because your insulin levels are so low. So start with what you eat, focus on a proper animal-based diet, then you can taper your fasting protocol as you get adjusted, as you get more comfortable with hunger, as your body is absorbing more nutrients, then you can go from eating all day to a 12-12, 16-8, 18-6, 20-4, then you can start doing OMAD once a week and then two to four times a week and then every day. That is it. That is the whole timeline, the whole protocol you need to get absolutely shredded. Um, right now, I'm doing one meal a day, probably about twice a week. The rest of the days I'm eating twice a day at around 18.6. Um, so yeah, that is pretty much everything. Uh, last thing I wanted to cover is just some example days of eating when you're fasting. Uh, so here's an example first day for breakfast, obviously nothing because we are do dodging breakfast. And then for lunch, you could have some ground beef with some eggs, some shredded cheese on top. And then as a nice little dessert, you can have some yogurt with, uh, I believe that is some yellow watermelon, which is pretty interesting and some frozen blueberries. And then dinner, you would have steak with fuck tons of butter because you can have lots of fat as long as you're eating low carb. Um, some cheese, eggs, steak, delicious. Who wouldn't want to eat this and get shredded? Like, come on. Here's another day. Nothing for breakfast, obviously. Or maybe some coffee, actually. Probably some coffee. And then some bunless burgers. I've been enjoying these a lot lately. Deconstructed burgers. So some just beef patty, cheese, eggs, onions, mushrooms, um, some pickles. And then for dinner, some steak, eggs, yogurt. I think I'll put some protein powder in there as well. That's why it's brown. And then some strawberries on top. Very simple, delicious, nutritious. Uh, here's an example of an OMAD day, literally just two fucking steaks, can't go wrong there. And lastly, here's another example of an OMAD day. So we've got steak, some sausages, some kimchi, some pickles, and some broccoli. Delicious, nutritious, can't go wrong. So that's pretty much everything. To sum it up, we'll put it all together. Start by eating the right foods like we just spoke about. High protein, high fat, low carb, predominantly animal-based diet. Meat, eggs, dairy, fruit, veg, easy. Start with an easy fasting window and then slowly taper it down to one to two meals a day as you get comfortable. Obviously no calories during your fasting window. Use different strategies to address your hunger during the fasting window. Get effortlessly shredded and enjoy life.